Hey folks, Casey here. I want to take a moment to shoot a quick reaction video to a video I just caught this morning. A channel called My Dirty Garage on YouTube did a video about the disappearing auto machine shop industry. And yeah, that is, that is a serious problem. Um, to start off, those of you new to the channel, I am a high school Votech teacher. I actually teach auto shop um, at the high school level. And so My Dirty Garage brought up the need for more vocational tech programs and the lack of them in our current school system. And so being a Votech teacher, that kind of spoke to me. We actually call it CTE here in Nevada, Career Technical Education, but same idea. Um, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna get into how I got the program that I am teaching off the ground because what are gripes without solutions, right? So you gotta provide solutions. You can't just come on here and cry. So automotive machine shops. Yeah, I've noticed it too, man. I've got a, uh, not this 289, but another 289 on the shelf that I wanted to do kind of a SBRA style vintage racing build on. I've got a 390 FE for my 68 Fastback Mustang, the, the bullet build that I really wanna do. I can't find anybody to machine them. Hey folks, Casey here. I want to make a quick appeal to you guys to hit that like button, comment, join the conversation. If you leave a comment, I will respond. Let's get talking about this stuff. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The YouTube algorithm absolutely crushes my reach if people aren't actively liking and commenting on the videos as I'm recording them so, or as they're planning on your device. So please help me get this stuff out there to the people and I thank you for it. All right, back to your regularly scheduled content. The automotive aftermarket on a whole seems to really be flourishing, but the machine shop side of things is drying up. Now, um, I have noticed that there are quite a few specialist shops out there. Uh, I follow a guy, I think his name is uh, Darren Smithberg, who does a lot of Hemi and injection type stuff. Uh, Steel Dust Machine is another guy on Instagram that I follow. He does a lot of Ford stuff, uh, not just Fords, but really high end, like maximum effort type builds. And I think if you are uh, specializing, you're probably doing pretty well. These are both relatively younger guys too. Might even be a little bit younger than myself. I'm 45 years old. Uh, that said, uh, the barriers to entry to get into automotive machining are pretty steep. The machines themselves are quite expensive. I have a lathe and a mill. Um, you can't do much for a V8 engine on a lathe or a mill. They're both invaluable for making small parts. I'm glad I have them. They're my favorite tools in the shop but um, I would love to get the machining equipment necessary to do cylinder heads, to do blocks, boring and honing, line honing, you name it. Um, and they're crazy expensive. In fact, I keep seeing machines on Facebook Marketplace, they'll pop up and a guy will have, you know, a half dozen machines and they'll have a $200,000 price tag on them and people seem to be buying them up. I'm not sure if they're all going into private garages or what, uh, man. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, in, in terms of an answer to machine shops drying up, I don't have one. Barriers to entry are high. The cost of getting started is extreme and not many people of my generation are gonna have the funds necessary to go out and do that. Um, and that will bring me around to another point here in a second, but I wanted to riff on this for a little bit longer. So I teach uh, career technical education, high school auto shop, uh, but I'm an offshoot of our local community college. I'm actually an associate professor, professor of the college and a uh, employee of the school district that I work for. Um, the college has an incredible machine shop and machining department. Uh, they've got Haas machines. They've got, you know, all the multiple CNC machines, all the traditional automotive shop machines. Um, I'm actually thinking about taking a course there just to learn the stuff and uh and possibly have access to these machines while i'm there so those vocational kind of programs are really alive and well at the community college level from what i've personally seen now again i'm in nevada i'm not in california um, i don't know if it's as alive and well there but i but i've heard that it is so the programs exist the trick i think really is creating the interest in the younger generation and so that's kind of the point i wanted to make it back around to when I was 16 years old, I bought my first Mustang. It was a 1965 six-cylinder coupe. I think I paid $2,200 for that car. Uh, when I bought my 68 Fastback almost 10 years ago now, I paid just under $40,000 for it, and it still needed a lot of work. So the pricing is kind of one of the biggest barriers to entry. 
I think another issue is during COVID, we all kind of got scared of each other. And maybe it goes back a little bit before that to the previous presidential election. I'm not going to get into politics here, but people don't talk to each other the way they used to. And I think this is the biggest issue, right? If you've got a neighbor, you need to talk to them. Um, if you've got a neighbor kid who even shows the slightest interest in this stuff, you're the guy on the street, the cool old cars, you need to talk to that kid. We need to develop the interest. And, um, you know, I think we also need to kind of not be hoarders in a sense. Uh, I just moved uh, across states recently, about almost three years ago now, and I let a lot of my stuff go. I gave a lot of it away just because I didn't want to move it. Um, and I felt good about that at the time. I gave a bunch of it to a kid that I knew for a few years uh, prior to the move, and he was stoked to have it. I gave some other stuff to a neighbor kid, not anything of any real value, you know, but stuff that had some value. And I don't care if they went on Facebook Marketplace and sold it, it gave them interest in something that they might not have been able to afford to go out and buy, even if for just a split second. I think there's some value to that. So when it comes to uh, hoarding these old cars and selling them for top dollar and selling them at auction, selling them to people overseas, yeah, yeah, I get it. You got to get your money out of your investments. But, you know, uh, if there's a neighbor kid or a young kid and maybe he doesn't quite have what you're looking for or maybe he's really not even close, but you're breaking even or making a little bit, I think we need to be willing to consider passing this stuff on to the younger generation. And yeah, they might go flip it and make a bunch of money, sell it to some guy overseas, and it's just a chance you take, I guess. But, you know, it's just an idea of how we get them interested. Because going back to my uh, high school auto shop, like I said, I teach auto shop. The kids aren't really that interested in the classics. A handful of them are, but for the most part, they're so unobtainable to these kids that they really just aren't interested. So, that is a problem if we're talking about preserving our hobby, right? So back to the high school auto shop thing and how I got started in that. Um, now I live in a small town, so that helps uh, being in a small town. But I asked around about you know the high school and if there was any sort of vocational tech and if they were interested in having it. And I found a guy who was basically a part-time teacher at the school teaching finance. He knew the principal, he introduced me, I said, hey, you know, I've worked as a mechanic several years of my professional career. I love this stuff. I have a passion for teaching it. I do YouTube videos and I try to teach in the YouTube video and I've always thought it would be cool to actually have a classroom of kids interested in learning and I could teach them directly. And they said, great. And you know what else they said? They said the hardest part of getting these programs off the ground is finding people to teach them. That's kind of a key point here. Now, again, Nevada, pretty easy to get your uh, business and industrial teacher's license. Uh, even easier still because I had a college degree, though that's not necessary. But basically I showed that I had professional experience. Uh, they contacted a couple of my old employers and, uh, and I filled out a form and I did a FBI background check and I did my fingerprints and I did all the stuff that you got to do. And within about Six months, we had the program getting off the ground. We were able to get a couple of small grants from independent businesses. Uh, I think we started with a total of $30,000 and we got the program off the ground. Going into our second year, we were able to get a grant from the state of Nevada for a lot of money. I don't wanna say how much, I don't wanna speak out of school and get anybody in trouble here, but the program is gonna be very big going into the next year and it's just really exciting, man. The kids love it. They love having something else besides band and PE to, to use up that energy that they have. And I'm teaching them something that will hopefully be very valuable to them for the rest of their lives. And I try to approach it like that. You know, I'm trying to teach them to be an automotive technician because that's what the state wants, but I'm also trying to teach them how to be resourceful, how to think for themselves, how to think outside the box, how to fix their own cars, how to fix their parents' cars, how to help a stranded motorist that they might find on the highway things like that, that will serve them well for the rest of their lives. So um, I kind of got off on a tangent. The uh, video that My Dirty Garage did was about machine shops and how they're disappearing, but he kind of went into the automotive teaching side of things and I wanted to speak on that because that's what I know about. Anyway, um, I think that's where I'm gonna end it because I'm trying to keep my videos a little uh, 
shorter and sweeter than I have been in the past. But I hope you found this interesting, at least, maybe a little bit thought-provoking. If you've ever had an interest in teaching high school auto shop, make some friends at your local school. I think the takeaway of this video should be make some friends, you know, get out of that COVID lockdown mentality, go talk to your neighbors, talk to your neighbor kids, be social, spread the joy of the car hobby, and I think the world will be a better place for it. All right, uh, that's enough for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. garage and I've got everything closed up because it's blowing outside so if I open it up then you won't be able to hear me because of the wind noise and there'll be quails and lizards running around and stuff.